Hey guys, my name is Morgan Fenter. Welcome back to my channel. I've just come back from a beautiful little vacation. Time to go through the garden and see what is new. So let's get straight to it with today's garden tour. Starting in the beginning, we have the pepper beds. And I am really pleased to say that most of them are looking like this. Really, really, really beautiful. Some of them, however, did get attacked by, I think it was cutworms. Um, this one might have just been blown over. But a lot of them, I can actually just tie. Oh yeah, look there, look there. There we go. Cutworms, you can see there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Terrible, terrible, terrible. So for some reason, the peppers do suffer from cutworms. If the pepper is not like really strong enough, the, the cutworms do seem to go for the the weaker peppers out of the bunch. So most of them are looking pretty fine because they are quite strong. And I will go around and ones that are leaning like this, I will just put a little string and tie them to the stakes. That's why I have the stakes there. And most of them are not needing it, but some of them do, so I will go around and tie any of the peppers up. Here's another one of the beds. This one has 11 peppers. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You can see as well that they are now opening up. They're growing. They are looking beautiful. They're nice and dark and green. I will link the video down below where I transplanted these peppers so you can see what they looked like before. But yeah, they're looking really, really amazing super super cool and then the last pepper bed is over here also really amazing i will have to come and tie up a few and i might just trim off some of the lower leaves like this just to prevent attracting from attracting anything um and yeah i'm going to remove any of these little grass shoots and any weeds that have come up but nonetheless they are looking really really amazing hey where's this one whoa this one's completely gone that's crazy okay oh here it is yeah i see Cutworms, 100% cutworms. Literally just snip the thing right off. Crazy. I think we're going to see a few more of those. Well, I'm really hoping not, but <laughs> we might probably see a few more of these cutworms that have come along and destroyed a few of the peppers. Right, and something I don't really show in big videos, I usually show them in the shorts. These are the street gutter marigolds. Really, really cool. I'm so impressed with how they have established and how they're growing. All of these are street gutter marigolds and these are some that I've actually saved the seeds from and planted them from seed. Really, really impressed. They're looking super cool. Where's the little grass up there? Okay, now moving to the log bed right next to the peppers where I installed this shade cloth cover. I think I need to do a little bit of an update because it's starting to bow a little bit more than what I thought. So yeah, there might have been some heavy winds while I was gone, but yeah, this bed, total, total trash. I need to get rid of this entire thing. And yeah, I'm wanting to install one single line of drip irrigation going across here, and then I'm gonna plant some peppers. Maybe I'll actually do some tomatoes. I'll see, I'll see. But they do have early blight, and because of the early blight, they have probably infected the soil now. So if I plant tomatoes in here, they might get infected with the early blight, even if they do have perfect spacing, perfect water, perfect light conditions. So yeah, it's quite sad that this bed has gotten so bad that I need to just rip everything out. But yeah, as we learn, it is what it is. They are producing some tomatoes, but you can see here, there's the early blast starting to come in. These leaves are looking terrible. So, oh, look at this one. That's a pretty crazy looking tomato. Here's a nice wrap one. I can actually take this one. Not too bad. This will ripen on the counter perfectly fine, so that's why I'm picking it like this before the caterpillars and whatnot get to it. And the same problem with these tomatoes as well. Huge, huge problem with spacing and watering, and they also got early blight. But they are still producing a few pretty okay ones. So we'll use this for like a little sauce. They, they're very, very delicious in a sauce or cut up nice and fine for a sandwich. So we are utilizing a few of the tomatoes, but yeah, most of them are looking pretty terrible. So I wasn't really expecting much from this bed. And as well in this bed, need to do a little bit of weeding, but I have three spinach plants and I'm really pleased to see that they have come up. The day I transplanted them, it was early, early in the morning, and then that day was incredibly hot, and everything was laying on the ground, and they were wilting like crazy, but yeah, they're all up and looking freaking amazing. 
Check that. Yeah, but do need to do some watering and some weeding on this bed as well. Coming along this side, tomatoes, absolutely crazy. These tomatoes, I actually like took the suckers and I then popped them straight into some compost. And I actually cloned the tomatoes. So these were suckers from those other tomatoes that I've now grown into their own huge plants and are already producing some nice flowers. And I think we might find some fruit here as well. And as well, as well, <laughs> the spacing, the spacing. So I did plant them decently spaced out, but oh yeah, look here. There we go, you can see some tomatoes coming in there. But yeah, they are pretty close together. I probably would have only planted maybe like three plants in this bed, but I think there's like seven or something. But yeah, it was kind of just a test to see how the suckers would do, but they are looking pretty, pretty good. Coming along to the seating table, I have my chilies over here. Also need to do a little bit of weeding. This is not supposed to be in here, but chilies are looking pretty, pretty all right. Here are some more tomatoes from seed. Don't know if I'm going to do anything with those. I might just put it in the compost and then some butternut, more butternut, watermelon. This is garlic, believe it or not. And then some more butternut and watermelon. Carolina Reapers and another street cutter marigold. Really cool. This tray was actually just left here. I didn't plant anything in here and there's actually some more squash that have come up. So those are probably either volunteers or maybe just ones that didn't germinate in time. And I did actually plant bell peppers in these trays, but nothing has come up except weeds. So I think the seeds are probably just a little bit too old. Right, and so now before I show you my proudest plant at the moment, this little bed over here, I'm wanting to plant the butternut and the watermelon seedlings that I just showed you I'm wanting to plant them in this bed over here because they should get enough sunlight and also they will get enough little sunlight so that they don't burn and they don't wilt too much because the summers here in South Africa are incredibly incredibly hot and my sister who was looking after the garden while I was gone thank you so much to my sister for looking after everything she even told me how everything was wilting even the butternut was wilting and that's how you know it is incredibly incredibly hot so that little space there should be perfectly fine for the butternut and the watermelon there so those few are going to go in I'm going to be spacing them around one meter apart so I'll probably do like a cross spacing or something but yeah they grow like crazy check this out here we have there's actually one bed over there that's where the bed is everything is spread that way everything spread that way absolutely insane here we have some fruit starting some more female flowers there's another fruit down there some flowers in there some male flowers over here now check this out boom butternut absolutely crazy these things are looking so so good and Boom! More butternut. Look at that. Crazy. So, so, so beautiful. More butternut over there. Another huge one over there. And this one as well. A little bit oddly shaped, but beautiful, beautiful butternut. Absolutely amazing. Organic grow butternut is also doing really well. I think there's a vine. You can see there's the vine going across here. And it's even got some fruit on already absolutely there's the end of the vine absolutely crazy crazy oh there's another fruit over there i'm discovering so many fruit look here crazy and this is also after i had i think yeah, maybe like seven to ten that didn't actually make it some of them were huge and then the next morning i go and check and they are yellow and shriveled up and then the next day they just fall off. So I think a lot of my viewers have been saying that it's from premature flowering or unsuccessful pollination. So now that there are a ton of flowers open every single day, I'm sure that the pollination is going to be a-okay. And here as well by the trampoline trellis. Check at these squash. Absolutely amazing. Now unfortunately, I don't know if they're butternut squash or if they're gem squash. But I do know that they are a climbing variety because you can see that the tendrils are starting to come out. Some tendrils over there. And the butternut squash does have tendrils as well. But they're looking a little bit different. They don't look exactly the same as the butternut squash. So 
maybe because those are started from seed and these are seedlings maybe they are slightly different but nonetheless they're looking absolutely amazing and i'm starting to weave them through here already oh look there's a fruit starting yo that's tiny so yeah oh i don't know if this one's gonna say okay maybe it just needs to grow a little bit then i'll weave it through there but yeah your champion chellis is looking absolutely insane and then over here this was my most recent video watermelon oh crazy crazy looking so so amazing there's more watermelon over there goes all the way along here there's another watermelon there's another watermelon and then from here i've got home saved seed butternut squash really really cool also looking pretty all right they're going to need some water but nonetheless they're looking really really cool all right and the last part of the garden tour is the corner garden the corner garden is looking pretty pretty all right there's only there's one thing I'm pretty sad about and most of the really, really nice tomatoes have got sun's gold and obviously that is because we've been in the 30s for a few days now and today is actually the first day, I think it's going to be like 28 today, it's not going to be too hot today so, and it's nice and overcast so tomatoes are going to love it. But a few of them are looking really cool, there's some under here, beautiful, beautiful tomatoes. But yeah, some of them have suffered from sun scald and some of them were burnt. Where's one that I, yeah. Some of them have burnt and been attacked by well, caterpillars and whatnot. But yeah, looking pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. There's only a few that have been affected by the sun scald. But nonetheless, they are actually pretty all right. Check the size of this one. <sighs> Crazy. Look at that. There's my hand. That's a pretty big tomato, it hasn't even started ripening yet, so it might, might swell up a little bit more. So here you can see, <laughs> there's a pepper missing over there, and here it is. So yeah, once again, cutworms have come along and said hello, but all the other peppers are looking really, really amazing. Marigolds also looking really amazing, and surprisingly enough, check out this, cutworms have attacked the marigolds. Let me see if I can show you exactly there. You can see there's there's where they've chowed the, the stem ah it's so so annoying i'm really not sure what to do about these cutworms i might just come out every night and just see if i can find something in areas that i know they come so they come there and they come over here as well but yeah unfortunate oh there's another one missing over there i don't even know where that one is but yeah cutworms crazy stuff definitely the biggest enemy for peppers but this bed is looking really really cool with all of those peppers along there as well super super amazing and i will be setting out this bed pretty shortly maybe within a few days because we actually predicted a little bit of rain tonight and for tomorrow so not sure what's going to happen i might see if i can maybe do something today but yeah this bed i've got some horse manure compost over there i'll link the video down below if you'd like to see where i got all of that and check that video out but look at this as well that's crazy the first christmas beetle bug thing no ways oh that is so cool that's how you know it's holidays i remember my sister and i used to go out in the holidays and see how many of these we can find you don't actually find a lot of them nowadays so yeah i don't know if you can hear but that kind of like whistling or whatnot that's actually those christmas beetles they start as a larvae then they turn into this beetle and then they come out into like it's almost like from a caterpillar to a butterfly so they start off as those bugs and then they turn into these these creatures there that's what's making those iconic holiday whistles and with that being said that is going to be the end of today's video thank you guys so much for watching i hope you really enjoyed don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button have a wonderful day stay active in the garden and i'll see you guys in the next video